With this video, we will be doing the documentary on P. Diddy confronts Eminem. And if you want to help this channel and the content I'll be making, please help support our merchandise. The link is in the description. And if you didn't hit that like button, make sure you hit the like button. Trying to get the channel to grow. And the only way we're going to do this is if you like, share, and comment on the content. So without further ado, let's get into this documentary. Let's go. Chi Chi, get the Yale. Get the Yale. You don't want a beef with Eminem. Facts. He, he shreds. Facts. Uh, that's who nobody want to fuck with, yo. That is crazy. Facts. When news broke on the web about Keith D's arrest in connection to Tupac's murder, it ignited wow. a frenzy of wild speculations. Many on the internet believe that some hip hop executives are now trembling with anxiety as online users draw eerie parallels so. with Eminem's <laughs> lyrics in Killshot. We are here today crazy. to announce the arrest of 60-year-old Dwayne Keith Davis, a.k.a. Keefe D, mm. for the murder of Tupac Shakur. The arrest of Keith D, a figure linked to the unsolved murder of the... And the crazy part is, we seen the actual footage of him when they grabbed him. It mm -hmm. looked like he was outside taking a walk or something, had a water bottle in his hand. They said, come here, grab him up, um, put the cuffs on him, um, same outfit he had on when they grabbed him up. And it's crazy, that's part of this documentary. Yeah, that's wild. It seems like it's going to be interesting, though. Yeah, it sounds gonna be interesting. For sure. The iconic rapper Tupac Shakur sent shockwaves through the hip hop community. You must be aware that Tupac's murder has been a mystery for years, fueling countless conspiracy T. theories I. and discussions. And now Keith D's arrest added a Cut new layer of intrigue on. to okay, this long standing enigma. Davis was arrested this morning by my LBMPD criminal apprehension team, and this investigation started on the night of September 7th, 1996. On September 29th, 2023, Keith D, a key figure in discussion surrounding the events leading to Tupac Shakur's tragic death, found himself in legal trouble as he was arrested. Right Keith D had been a frequent guest on interviews and podcasts where he openly discussed the incident that resulted in Tupac's demise. During one notable appearance on Vlad TV, tensions arose when EDI, mean of Tupac's outlaws, asked a probing question. He used to go uh, drink and smoke some weed. And he happened to be hanging out the window. Mm. He's hanging out the window like he was in a parade. Mm. Tupac. Yeah, he was. Keith D, who was... And a lot of people be like, why would he put this information out here? Why would he go tell on himself um, in the interviews? Before he even did the interviews, first of all, he had a book. A tell a book. We wrote all this in the book. So right. he wasn't saying nothing in these interviews that he didn't have a book or really already no published <laughs> and then second of all from my understanding i don't know if it's true or not but from my understanding um he's got cancer and don't have that much time um on this earth so he then he's like why not get my family some bread why not put some fun, uh, money in my family pockets before i check out the, if that's the case it, that's the only thing that would make sense yeah. i mean you don't wish that on nobody but i mean it's a lot to this unraveling this yeah whole for sure situation and one hand it's like dang and on the other hand it's like man for real for real it's crazy yeah the uncle of the alleged k of tupac did not shy away from sharing his perspective on various platforms his willingness to provide insights into the oh, fateful night in las vegas on september 7th 1996 has surprised many according to him he had been in the car alongside his nephew orlando anderson when the infamous shooting occurred sir do you have a phone yeah what about it give us man seven seven dollars ultimately claiming Tupac's life. Baby laid and Freaky were in the back seat. We were just all in the car again. Okay, yeah. This was the white Cadillac. Yeah. Following further investigations, there was growing anticipation that Diddy might have been involved in hiring Keith D to orchestrate Tupac's murder. Mm. Detective Greg Carding arrived at a shocking revelation. Sean Puff Daddy Combs was alleged to have ordered a hit worth $1 million on Tupac Shakur. The suspected motive was believed to be connected to the intense rap feud between himself and Biggie Smalls. Carding asserted that the music mogul had substantial gang affiliations in Los Angeles and had reportedly engaged in the services of Dwayne huh. Keith Keith D. Davis. Tupac has always been my favorite rapper forever. That's like my top um, rapper. Um, so a lot of this information I already knew because I watched all of Vlad interviews with the cops, mm -hmm. um, with everybody involved. So this information been out there for a while. It just now 
I guess people it, instead of looking for the information and watching the interviews, like now they actually like giving it have time. information presented, so people are tuning in. Yeah, because the only way you would have knew that if you was watching Vlad TV, right. everybody doesn't watch Vlad, yeah, so now it's like more the masses yeah, know. I feel you, and it's wild because you know what I'm saying when you look at the time. The, the time span when all this is being said, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? They talking about ties to another side of the country. It wasn't yeah. like, you know, to paint the picture for people who wasn't around then. Like, it wasn't like now where you could just look, look in your phone, phone and call somebody. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This was big moves that yeah. was being made. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's different. Right. A member of the Crips to carry out the assassination. They've got to retaliate so they don't look like, you know, a weak gang. Right. And two, you know, they owe it to him. According to Carding, the mastermind behind Tupac's murder was Orlando Baby Lane Anderson, a member of the Crips gang. Originally, the plan was for Keith D to carry out the hit, but a last minute change of plans led to Keith D's nephew being assigned the task of carrying out the assassination. You know, the Southside Crips and Orlando Anderson, Keefe D, they know that hey, we just hit this dude in Las Vegas and, you know, it's, it's on. Moreover, according to some sources, the relationship between Diddy and Tupac was rocky. Tupac consistently asserted, until his tragic murder in 1996, Facts. that Sean Diddy Combs was connected to a 1994 attack on him and his West Coast associates outside a studio in New York City. Reporter Chuck Phillips has suggested that Combs might have more knowledge about the violence than he has publicly disclosed. He said during an interview, Well, alright, like I said, I have talked to people that I believe were involved in the orchestration of this attack and I had contact with the assailants themselves, and I believe that Sabatino himself told Puffy, or Sean Combs, whatever you call him. Furthermore, M My understanding of what happened with that, um, Biggie and Little C's and Junior Mafia was in one room. Diddy and two other guys was in that room. One guy had a problem with Tupac because he was supposed to be on a feature of a guy's song that was on his label. Tupac didn't do it, so they saying that that guy set Tupac up, and Puffy knew about it, um, and that's what the whole problem that Tupac had with Bad Boy, the record label, because um, they knew it was about to go on. Biggie didn't know, but Puffy knew, and it's um, information got back to him and that's why he had a problem with him because of the incident right there when he got robbed on his way coming up to see Biggie um, is when they robbed him and shot him five times and we've seen the infamous picture of him coming out of uh, uh, going to court and he was in a wheelchair uh, with the cast no and the thing brought the, up and, yeah, yeah definitely Eminem, widely regarded as one of the top rappers globally, has also expressed suspicions that Diddy may have had a role in Tupac's murder. Mm. This unsolved crime from the 1990s has recently resurfaced. We was, uh, the songs we did, and it's crazy, the songs we did is the songs where he actually kind of referenced something um, to it, and they just mentioned that about Eminem mm -hmm. and this, which is crazy. Like, all the songs we could have reacted to, to Eminem, the songs we did line up with actually this. Actually lined up. It's crazy. It's due to Eminem's diss track aimed at Machine Gun Kelly, reigniting speculation among rap MGK. music fans that Diddy might have been involved in Tupac's demise. Oh, well, Kelly, they'll be putting your name next to Chai, next to Benzino, Bye, mother like the last saying Haley in vain, Haley. Mm. Approximately three years ago, Detroit-born lyricist Eminem reignited a fresh controversy surrounding the tragic murder of Dre Tupac Shakur. He boards. did so by including lyrics in one of his songs accusing Diddy of being involved in the K of the hip-hop legend. Tupac, who also went by the name Lasan Parrish Crooks, was only 25 years old when he was shot four times after leaving a brawl on the Las Vegas Strip in 1996. On September 7th, 1996, the 25-year-old rapper was gunned down in Las Vegas. The identity of the perpetrator has remained a mystery, and numerous conspiracy theories have circulated, Snoop. some suggesting he I'm may have Snoop. faked his death. In September 2018, Eminem released his then latest- Yeah, you heard that more than a little bit about faking his death. You heard about that, Elvis. Mm -hmm. You hear a bunch of people saying, like, when they, one of the legends go, even heard about Michael Jackson, people just be saying, like, they're still here. I've seen yeah, them. Somewhere else. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just seen recently, not too long ago, um, a car. The, the car. The car that they got, that Pop got shot in. Okay. Yeah. Um, it sold for like $1.7 or something. That's crazy. I was like, that's wow. In yeah. my mind, I'm like, well, I guess it's dope. It's like historical baseball. But yeah, I that's what it is. I don't know if I want to be riding around and, you know what I'm I saying? I don't think they got it to ride around. I think it's like you said. Right. But just something, it's a piece of history. Yeah. A big piece of history. Yeah, that's different though, but yeah. wow. Yeah.
This record, Kill Shot, which was widely Kill known to be aimed at too. rapper Machine crazy. Gun Kelly as part of their ongoing feud. The diss track includes the lyrics, the day you put out a hit is the day Diddy admits he put the hit out that got Pac K. The song ends with the words, and I'm just playing Diddy, you know I love you. However, That's other crazy. musicians wasted no time in criticizing the 45-year-old rapper whose real name is Marshall Mathers for his wow. comments. In a tweet that has since been deleted but was seen by our sources, US rapper Jay Electronica expressed his thoughts. How dare you accuse Diddy of K Tupac? While well, you completely look past Jimmy Iovine and those who profited from his death the most. That's crazy. But um, we were talking about that, and we said it kind of makes sense because Eminem is with the producer Dr. Dre, who's on the West Coast. It happened on the West Coast. Um, so he knew he probably knew some stuff from Dre, what was going on. They were working there. together. Pac and Dre was working, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I didn't really think about what was going yeah. on. That was yeah. like the homie, like now they was beefing at that time. Yeah, they was beefing at that time, yeah, yeah. but still, like he was too. Close he would to know. Like, yeah, yeah. He would know. know. Yeah, you would know. But like I said, like the best, the the worst best thing in everybody's favor who's connected to this is that there was no uh, no uh, iPhone. Yeah. Or no no footage. You right. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like nowadays, if something had happened, it would have been caught camera. somewhere. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We lived in a time that was different. Yeah. Like, if you wasn't there, you wasn't there. Yeah. That's you know what I mean? I if those went. was the homies, those was the homies, <laughs> right. and they was there. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, like, things is way different. Yeah. But now, you know what I'm saying? A lot of the people that was involved is dead anyway. It was just because it been so long ago. Yeah. He further added, You best tread carefully, son, before I come tear your ivory tower down like Solomon done the Templar Knights. Oh. Rapper turned business mogul Diddy, known by his real name Sean John Combs, didn't PJ. immediately react to Eminem's comments. Notably, Diddy he was the, the manager of the Notorious B.I.G. when the rapper was caged in a drive-by shooting in Los Angeles, Cal... Here's one thing you need to do before buying anything online. Don't spend another dime on Amazon until you watch the... California just a year after Tupac's murder. Strikingly, Biggie's murder has also never been solved, leading both cases shrouded in mystery. However, Diddy had previously addressed long-standing rumors connecting Biggie to Tupac's shooting during an interview in 2017. He wow. said, There has been negative propaganda put out about me that's not true and has really stained, tried to stain my legacy. Mm. If you think that I'm a scumbag that would ever steal anything, my name is Diddy, Sean Combs. I never took nothing from nobody a day in my life. People believe that these comments emerged during a period when a British man made sensational claims that Tupac Shakur was still alive. He asserted that he had been part of a security team involved in helping Tupac escape from Las Vegas. I've always been a person, I don't like to get in just talking people's business and things like that. But not right now. Michael Nice told TMZ, Why you think nobody been arrested if they said they the one that caved Tupac? Because mm. Tupac is not dead. If he was dead, they'd be arresting those dudes for murder. You know, wow. he's somewhere smoking a Cuban cigar on an island. It yeah, was me, about that my before. brother, the pilot. Before. Tupac is the co-pilot and two Panther guys on the jet. He added, We took off and immediately knew we were safe. We felt good and it was like escaping from prison. There were hugs and handshakes when we finally managed to get him to Barbados. Then my brother helped him get to Cuba from there. Gaddafi was doing some kind of hand signals. He looked kind of funky. I saw them alive way after their said deaths. But wow. is it possible that Eminem's line was a subtle way of alluding to Diddy's alleged involvement in the Tupac murder case? Here's what we've gathered. In 2006, Biggie Small's mother, Valletta Wallace, filed a lawsuit against the LAPD, seeking an estimated $500 million in damages. Wow, half a billy. He was a good friend, and people need to see or See that part of him that nobody else knew. This legal action was rooted in a widely known conspiracy theory suggesting that the police had concealed information regarding her son's death. Wow. Subsequently, the case was reopened and assigned to LAPD Detective Greg Carding. During his investigation, oh, Detective uh, Carding uh, uncovered new information connecting Diddy to the murder of Tupac, oh, which may have inspired Eminem's reference in his lyrics. I make them bigger by getting into this thing where I'm like, I want to destroy him. Wow. And Greg was also the one who linked Biggie and Tupac's <laughs> death. Gotta retaliate so they don't look like, you know, a weak gang. 
And when he claimed that Baby Lane was the one who did the deed, he also got involved in a fist fight with Pac at a Las Vegas <sighs> casino hours before the shooting took place. Another bombshell was dropped that allegedly Faith Evans, who was married to Biggie Smalls at Dang. the time, was said to have knowledge of a plot involving Diddy to harm Tupac Shakur. Following Tupac's murder on the West Coast, Keith D that. reportedly asserted that he reached out to both Diddy and Evans, informing them that they bore responsibility for the rapper's death. Wow. What the ass, man? Was that us? Is it, you know, what just happened out there? Keith D's like, yeah. Even wow. more surprising, Detective Carding asserts that Biggie had no involvement in the murder of Tupac, despite their widely known feud in the world of rap. He maintains that Biggie had no knowledge of any sinister intentions from Diddy to harm both Tupac Shakur and his manager, Suge Knight. And I think that they had love for him. You know, I think they really respected him and he was, you know, trying to represent, you know. The saga persisted following his close brush with death in the Tupac murder case. It's purported that Suge Knight, the head of Death Row Records, sought vengeance by allegedly enlisting a member of the Bloods gang to eliminate the notorious B.I.G. The hired hitman fatally shot Biggie as he was returning home from a Vibe magazine hosted party. Wow. What's intriguing is that the documentary also asserts that Knight had encountered Tupac's assailant and even attended the same school as the contracted hitman, Keith D. The man got killed and the homies was there and, and Suge was the homie, and he was with Death Row. Wardell Pucci. That was like uh, Mob James. He has another um, guy. Um, he was on the other side, the South Side, Crip Sides. Um, he didn't know a lot that was going on around that time, and a lot uh, would happen. He gave a lot of information on his Vlad DBs, at least what he knew um, mm -hmm. that happened at the time. The homie, and he was with Death Row. Wardell Pucci Fus, an alleged member of the Bloods gang, picture. is said to have carried out the murder of Biggie after purportedly receiving a payment of $13,000 from Suge Knight. As per Carding's account, Pucci was present at the same party as Biggie and reportedly fired shots at Biggie's car as they were attempting to depart. Tragically, Biggie succumbed to his injuries while en route to the hospital. So they realized, you know, the Southside Crips and Orlando Anderson, Keefe D, they know that hey, we just hit this dude in, in Las Vegas and no, it's, it's on. According to Carding, despite their thorough investigation, the case was eventually dropped because the LAPD managed to defeat the $500 million lawsuit filed by Biggie's mother, Valletta Wallace. In 2009, Carding was subsequently removed from the task force as a result of a separate internal affairs investigation. Wow. Even though he was ultimately cleared of any charges, there are still individuals who perceive the retired detective as a rogue cop. At the same time, these guys are very self-assured and they believe in the strength of their gang and they're violent. Both Orlando Baby Lane Anderson and Wardell Pucci Fus have reportedly passed away from apparent unrelated yeah. causes. Therefore, even if the assertions made in the documentary were accurate. Yo, he got everybody on the board. He got Mace. I mean, he got Diddy, Lil C, Shug. Um, Reggie White is, he was a cop slash security. Everybody. The individuals who were allegedly directly responsible for the murders of Tupac and Biggie are no longer alive to face consequences. However, there are some who speculate that Diddy may have been involved in their demise as well. Diddy hears about the shooting, finds out that there's, you know, then Tupac's been shot and is in the hospital in Las Vegas. Fans of hip hop wow. and those intrigued by the ongoing feud have eagerly awaited Diddy's response to Eminem's claim that the media mogul had a role in Tupac's death. According to Joe Budden, Diddy has finally addressed this allegation. On a 2020 episode of his podcast, Budden shared Diddy's response to the lyrics, claiming the mogul told him that it's, quote, handled. Nothing to speculate about, nothing to talk about. Puff said it's in his hands and he said I can say it, Budden said. He said there's nothing to say about it, it's in my hands. He wild. Button added that after the brief conversation, he quickly changed the subject. However, wow. Diddy had maintained silence on the topic of Tupac's tragic death until today. In 2020, when questioned by Charlemagne, the host of The Breakfast Club, about the report suggesting his involvement in a hit on Tupac, Diddy responded, We don't talk about things that are nonsense. We are not even going to go there with all due respect. Wow. But I appreciate you as a journalist for asking. Diddy emphasizes that he has undergone significant personal growth throughout his career. I've seen that um, interview with Charlamagne. Did you see that interview that just was shown right there? Yeah. He was just real dismissive of it. Like, we don't yeah. do stuff like that. We don't talk nonsense. We don't entertain nonsense. We're just dismissive of it altogether. Yeah, he just, like, 
He deflected. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. He deflected. It, it yeah. just sucks, though. You know what I'm saying? In the grand scheme of things, it's like anything else. Nobody wants their name involved in no. you know, anything of this nature. No. You know what I'm saying? Especially, at all. Especially when you look at all that he's done and tried to build and you know what I'm saying yeah. it's just it's just a messed up situation cause yeah. it's connected to Buster activity yeah for you know sure. what I mean for no other way to say it like yeah. and and right now the best thing he's doing is what he's doing is keep his mouth closed exactly focus on the album that's it <laughs> Rear End has made a deliberate effort to maintain his composure as he's matured within the industry. However, the story doesn't end there. In a shocking revelation, Mike Tyson appears to assert that he possesses Tyson. substantial evidence linking music mogul Sean Diddy Combs to Tupac's untimely demise. This revelation has rekindled the long-standing debate and speculation surrounding the tragic and mysterious loss of Tupac. That was part of my world. My world just happened. But just because it was Tupac and I was attached to it. It was different. Amidst the era dominated by legends like Tupac Shakur, whose lyrical genius mesmerized the industry, we now fast forward to the present day, where we are confronted with astonishing revelations. In a candid interview with DJ Vlad, Mike Tyson made a sincere confession acknowledging that he carries a share of responsibility for the tragic loss of the iconic rapper. I feel a little guilty about him coming to the fight pressuring him for, hey, we're being the tape, don't forget the tape, you know? This unexpected revelation has left the world in a state of shock and rekindled intense interest in the enigmas shrouding Tupac's untimely passing. His mother wrote me from prison and explained that Tupac was at the Indiana Black Expo and wanted to meet me, and that's the first day I met him. This admission not only brings fresh perspective to the events surrounding Tupac's demise, but also reveals the complexities of the intertwined lives of these two influential figures. The friendship between a boxer and an activist well, may like have appeared unconventional, right yet it was undeniably authentic. The origins of this connection trace back to a time when Iron Mike was already a renowned star, while Facts. Tupac was still striving to establish his name in the industry. Their paths converged in a nightclub, where the aspiring rapper left a lasting impression on the baddest man on the planet with his remarkable musical talent. Really good friend. Um, I didn't hang out with him much. Yeah. He didn't hang out, but we were always welcome when we saw each other. He was always welcome to be with me. It's a heavy burden that he carries, yearning for the ability to rewind time and change the course of history. The Don't recollections of their friendship that. and rewind the deep connection time. they once yeah. shared serve as an enduring reminder of the possibilities that were lost and the profound impact Tupac's absence has had on Mike's life. I expect somebody to die after a fight or somebody get hurt or something crazy happened. But what happened to him it was, it was different. On September 13th, 1996, the world- It's like that for anybody you know personally on a personal level. It's different when you hear about somebody you don't know anything about them. I mean, you might know who they are through media, but you don't really know them. But if it's somebody you really know, grew up you with- got a connection with- It's different. It's yeah. way different. It's way different. You gotta process it. Yeah. The world lost the iconic musician after a brave battle for his life. His untimely death left a void in the hearts of countless fans, and the mystery surrounding his murder remains unresolved, adding to the enduring pain of his loss. One of his fans wrote, Tupac talked about woke subjects in interviews and his music, and it makes me feel that these cases aren't solved due to bribing the authorities with money or threats to avoid incarceration, and make it into a cold case just like other similar situations with other celebrities' deaths that they were labeled as suicide to wow. do damage control and keep them silent from the information they have on others that can destroy their empire. Another one wrote, Crazy how so many murders get solved relatively quick or even after a decade, but it seems that Tupac and Biggie will never truly be solved for lack I'll of caring by local government. Oh, these it's sad, of, uh, but I do believe Tupac post. is alive and Biggie is dead. During several interviews, Tyson has pointed figures toward Diddy many times. Patrick Bet David, the host of a podcast, Valuetainment, asked about the intricacies of the death behind Tupac Shakur. No, I just knew him for a long time, said Mike Tyson after being questioned on his closeness with P. Diddy. Awesome guy. I knew him before he was Diddy, when I first became champ. He used to have my crates at my after parties and stuff, said Tyson. Mike Tyson reflected on his childhood memories, recalling how he found it astonishing to think about leaving negative influences behind and never encountering them again at his lowest points. He said, I remember when I was 11, 12 years old. It baffles me to think you just got away from these people. You'll never see them again at the worst of your level. You're not the only one God had his hands on. These guys were made successful too. You're almost like proud in a way. Moreover, the public's anger and frustration regarding Tupac's demise is tangible. 
and there was little doubt that they would respond vehemently if they were to confront the culprit individually and given the chance. Furthermore, Mike Tyson has publicly issued a stern warning to the individual responsible for Tupac's death, leaving no That's ambiguity on, that he won't hesitate to hold them accountable should he ever cross paths with them. He wrote in a sense-deleted Facebook post, I wish I had five seconds alone with Tupac's K. Numerous reports and witness accounts have indeed suggested potential connections between Diddy and the murder of Tupac fueling speculation and doubt. For some individuals, Eminem's allegations may not seem unfounded given the ongoing debate and investigation into the circumstances surrounding Tupac's tragic death. Wow. It's Trey TV. Let's get it. This is Lamar Wilson here representing Ghetto Action News Network underscore all lower cases. No spaces. And you can find us on Facebook and when you do, make sure you hit the like button. No, hit the like button. All right, I'm gonna get right on into this. This was a documentary here, and it just had a lot of information uh, relating to the passing of Tupac and mm -hmm. uh, Keefe D getting arrested mm -hmm. and, you know, uh, Diddy being implicated w with involved in the situation. So, yeah. um, you know what I'm saying? This is one of them situations that everybody's hearing about. You right. know what I'm saying? It's definitely in the chatter. It's barbershop talk. It's like... Yeah, definitely barbershop it's talk. It's one of them things that have been going on for... Well, this case... Mm -hmm. for over 27 years but like recently in time it's the last month or so yeah you know it's really been everywhere but um i think everybody kind of just want to know but like at the same time you can't just make somebody talk either yeah no. you know what i'm saying so it's it's a, just a strange situation it's a strange situation and you know you you wondering what's going to come to pass with this like yeah, is he going to have to talk is somebody going to pull him to the side and start asking him questions yeah. are they going to leave him alone is everybody just going to act like we ain't seen nothing or Time you know saying nothing cuz when i even watching this documentary i'm seeing stuff that i didn't even think about or conceptualize right. like when he had that little tree yeah like of faces and people connected i was mm. seeing faces i was like well damn like yeah. i never even would think yeah, you know what i'm saying connected. yeah so this is this is deep you know what i'm saying it's crazy that conversation can put uh thoughts to looking for action and yeah. understanding so i thought this was a good watch what you think i think it was a good little documentary put together a lot of information i'm in here for 17 minutes really not that long of time but for the 17 minutes we got we definitely got a lot of information that was packed into that 17 minutes which i thought was great it was visually put together well it was entertainment and he came with a lot of receipts and the stuff he could, he showed you the parts of the interview that he could show you. And I thought he did a great job uh, putting this together, but it's just one of them things that people still put information together. Like people think they know everything that happened, but stuff is gonna come out in the trial that we never knew about. And we just gotta wait because time will tell. And I can't wait till we get into our next episode, but until then, it's your boy Trey TV. And I'm out.